country's population continues to grow. So does the demand for land and space for human settlement and farming. It is against this background that more and more people living in urban centers such as Kampala are turning to urban farming as a solution that will accommodate the lack of space for urban farmers. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. In urban farming, you creatively use what you have. I'll give an example. As an urban farmer, my biggest constraint is the space. My biggest constraint is the land. And so what I do, I use polythene bags, I use flower pots, I use sacks to grow in my plants to make sure that I'm cutting the expenses in the home. Urban farming is a kind of farming practiced mainly in urban centers on small pieces of land such as a backyard or a veranda. Professor Nambatya is the co-founder of Kwagala Farm, a model urban farm to many urban farmers. Seeds of Gold tours with her as she elaborates the need for urban farming and how you too can benefit. Kwagala Farm started on March 9, 2010 and when we started um, Kwagala Farm, our objective was to cut expenses in the home. Our biggest challenge was to make ends meet. And so we started urban farming, or we started farming on our small garden of half an acre to make sure that we're making ends meet. We're, make, we're, not, we're not buying everything, we're not buying tomatoes or onions, but we're, we're growing what we want to eat. And so when we started, our objective was cutting the expenses in the home. What did we do? Because Kwagala Farm is on half an acre, and that half acre includes the home, the best thing that we needed to do was to creatively use the spaces that we had. And so we started from our lawns, we used the, pl the flower pots that I used to have in flowers, I removed the flowers and put on onions and then we started vertical farming as you can see the strawberries where we're growing moving up because of the little space that we had in urban farming you creatively use what you have i'll give an example as an urban farmer my biggest constraint is the space my biggest constraint is the land and so what I do, I use polythene bags, I use flower pots, I use sacks to grow in my plants to make sure that I'm cutting the expenses in the home. Urban farming really focuses on using your backyard to make sure that you're feeding your home healthy, feeding on things that you know, but also making sure that you're able to save some little money so that you're not spending out of the pocket. As urban farming focuses on maximizing the small space one has, it is advised to venture more into accommodative crops such as vegetables, spices, bird and animal rearing. We all know very well that healthy eating requires eating vegetables not once a week, not twice a week, but an urban farmer should consider eating vegetables as a daily meal. The way you eat um, food and maybe sauce, that's the same thing when it comes to eating vegetables. And so one thing that an urban farmer can do is making sure that they have vegetables grown in the home. And the vegetables can be grown in sacks, they can be grown in polythene bags, they can be grown in pots. But making, making that intention that I'm going to use my small space to make sure that I have vegetables in the home. Vegetables, almost many varieties of the vegetables, take not more than three to four months. And so it's, it's one thing that you can do in terms of time, it's top notch, but also it grows so quickly and then you can be able to harvest and feed the family. So on Kwagala Farm, you'll find over 10 vegetables. We do Sukuma Wiki, we do Nakati, we do Boga, we do Amaranthus, what people call Dodo. We also have spinach. 
we do salads like lettuce, both red and green. But beyond the vegetables, we also do spice farming where we, we have about 10 varieties of spices. Um, we also have beyond the spices, we also do the chicken, we do the cows. When we're to sell like say the spices, we don't sell them in spice form. No, 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 no. What we do, we get the spices, we dry them organically, and then after drying them in a solar dryer, we pound them, some of them we do extractions, and then we pack in small um, tins of different Jenga spices. The beauty of urban farming starts with everything small that you have to begin with. Even for as low as 1,500 shillings for a sachet of seedlings from Container Village in Kambala, an enthusiastic farmer is ready to start a farm. When we started in 2010, our capital was 1,500 Uganda shillings. What did we use that for? The 1,500 Uganda shillings is money we got to buy a sachet of tomatoes. And so I went to Container Village Sort of trying to say, after we had a conversation with my husband, of saying we need to cut expenses in the home. So when we buy this packet of tomatoes, we come and then pour it in a nursery bed. After pouring it in a nursery bed, the whole story continues from make transplanting, after transplanting, to putting it on raised, uh, um, sort of like ovuz or kuvuli nisa. And then from that, the tomatoes coming. Because by then, financially, we were not doing very well, um, instead of going to buy pesticides, I used to mix mululuza, muetango, and shigaji to spray the tomatoes. I need to be honest that back then, it's not what I wanted, but it's because I didn't have the money. And so, that set me on a journey of organic farming. Laban shows us how to make organic fertilizer and herbs. What I'm going to do, I'm, I want to show you how I make organic medicine for, for animals. Yeah, what I do, I will, I will get aloe vera, muetango, mululuza and tobacco. Then what I do, I will do this. I will cut aloe vera into small pieces like this. Then after cutting aloe vera into small pieces, so I will get also mururuza. What I do, I will remove leaves like this one. After removing, I will grass it like this. Then I will put it in the bucket like this one. Then after, I will get Muetango. Then also I will remove some branches. This one it doesn't have it has small leaves, but I will get I will remove branches like this one. Then after I will also plus it like this one. The way, the way I how I am doing. Then after, I will get leaves for tobacco. This is the tobacco. Then also, I will class it like this. After, I will power water. After powering water, I will mix it. The way how I am doing is like this one. That's how I do. Yeah. Without over researching from all the literature available on farming these days, Professor Diana says that one can start with the local knowledge acquired from their upbringing, just like she did. The one thing I tell a farmer is to start with what they have and to start where we are. In urban farming, we start with what we have. In urban farming, you don't need to say, I'll go and get a loan or I'll borrow money, no. 
you simply look at a, a spoiled polythene, you look at a, a, a cadea for sugar, and then you start there. And so by starting there, you learn on this journey. You're challenged on this journey. And you thrive on that journey. I also know that one of the principles of entrepreneurs, very successful entrepreneurs will tell you, they start small. So when you hear people saying, I've not yet gotten capital, that is just an excuse. You need to start small and grow big. As we approach Kwagala Farm located in Kulambiro Chisasi, the visible urban farms belonging to the neighboring homes alert and lead you to the amazing professor's own urban farm. In fact, this is what you would call an urban village. We we'll later learn that Professor Dana has helped members of her community and other areas adopt urban farming as a means of survival. Uh, you're welcome to Kwagara Demo Garden. Why is it called Kwagara Demo Garden? It's a garden for almost a community. It trains the women who are, who are not having money to come and train with us at home. Uh, this was made for the villagers, like women in the village who have no time to come at home to get training there. So when they get time, we built it with a um, uh, chain link so that everyone can come from out and stand from out and run through the, 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 the chain link without even bringing someone to train him. Um, so every Wednesday, Mama Winnie, the one you have seen behind there, comes with her own women. The call urban is open for them. We start training them what to do. This is a walkway. It is like a compound in the front of your house. If you have a compound in front of your house, this is what you can do. You make a walkway, you make some different gardens inside the, I mean, in the compound. There are types of gardening, like Sakamo, I mean, food tower, uh, kitchen gardening, box gardening. This is one type of the garden which you can do in your compound. It's called a food tower. A food tower is put in a place where the, you have a small space that you can grow many crops on the food tower. You can grow many plants of the squash on the food tower. It can be, it can help at home to feed your home and you sell some. The food tower stands in a square, in a, it is three square meters, but it can contain more than the food which can be in 10 square meters. Like it can carry 60 plants of skumawichi, more than 200 uh, plants of uh, spring onions. So you can still sell. You sell when the spring onion is bent like this, you can sell like in our place, we sell this like, of 2,000. So here you can sell 2,000 every day. And you can sell these leaves, each 100. You can see now how much money you're having in one plant, two plants, three plants, three, four, four plants. You can now collect like 10,000 per week. If you're a woman, you do that at your home, you will never lack rice, cooking oil, and sugar. So this is a box garden. This is another type of, of, uh, of a garden. This one helps you in case it is your compound and you have children who play around. They have food, I mean, they, are, they play their football, they can't come and play inside here, they can be playing around outside there. But now you have you dress this place to make, to make, to show you that in case there are no children who want to play around, you can see your compound, design your compound like right this, so that you invest your food. You have your, you have your, your food for your kitchen. In a very small space, you can, every plant has this one, as you can see, here, so three plants can feed the whole family in supplying of sauce. 
Whether you have got your spring onions, you have got your skuma wechi, you have got this fruit, you can still you can still feed your family. We have more plants in this garden. Banana plant looks like I can can work like ten banana plants. Because this banana, if it yields properly, it will yield the product of many plants. Only one. How? Oh, we feed it with this one. This is chicken waste. We just tie chicken waste. We dig something near the banana two feet deeper, two feet across, two feet across. So that when water comes from rain, washes this um, uh, urea from this chicken waste, the banana, to feed the banana. That's why you look, you look at it, it's strong. Eh? Mm -hmm. You have to leave it with two other young ones. This is another type of food tower. It is cheaper because the other food tower was expensive because you can't easily get that that uh, that net. Here we use logs and this wire mesh, chicken but I mean bad mesh. Eh? You plant your logs in the, in, in the center, you pour a stone. After pouring stone, you make this log stand outside, one feet from the center. You put a mesh around this log, you pour soil. Now, as I was counting for you, 60 plants of skuma, which now you can see it properly. Each row has 8, 8 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9. As we started training the women, we, we, we took the deliberate effort to say, let's reach out to community. And our first community was the Kulambiro community. We also reached out to the women in Chiruga, in, uh, in Luero. So we, 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 we sort of started now connecting with communities where we thought we could support people to do similar, similar things. And so what happened was that when we started training the women, it not only opened Kwagala Farms opportunities, it also created what we call our impact. When you walk through a village here, women are farming, though in small spaces, but, but they really show you how far we've come. So, how far Kwagala Farm has gone is the work that the women have taken on. Beyond that, we've received a number of awards. In 2015, we received the award by the Netherlands Embassy, DSC, UKLM and the Vision Group. In, in 2016, we were given a global award called the American Express Again Leadership Award. This is the first time this award is being given in Africa and to a woman. And then in 2017, we were given the Women Champion Award by the Private Sector Foundation. But with these awards, we've also had the opportunities to sort of like establishment us. So when we started our skilling program in 2011, 2012, we are really training these women on our own, really using our Corporate Social Responsibility Fund as Kwagala Farm to make sure that we support our training program. But we later got support from the World Bank that was beginning last year in that they pay for the training of the women. Beyond that, we've received also an additional donor called Afsiskai who really focuses on Healing young people below the age of 35. And then I went to the Nonga Villa, where I met you. Do, do, it's a particular worry, and my papa, and Sugi, and the Mujiba, and I told you, Mulla, and Jimmy, how we knew you. Never a good idea, and you told me, and you never know, and you told me, 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 and you told Okay. Never, never, you know, I've been over here all day. You have to 
in our next episode, we'll look at how Dr. Diana is using her cows not only for milk but for something bigger by a celery, a byproduct from cow wastes which she demonstratively acknowledges as her biggest income on the farm. Thank you.